Admiral's Log. In a startling turn of events, we've received a declaration of war from not one, but three formidable European powers. France, Spain and Italy. This rapid succession of hostilities has left us reeling. Our once established alliance is shattered and our forces stretched thin as we confront a new and unexpected threat on the horizon. What drives these nations to take up arms against us remains a mystery, for there's no formal alliance between them, no shared quarrels or grievance that would justify such a coordinated assault. It is possible that they have taken notice of China's rise in the world, alarmed by the growing strength and influence that we wield on the global stage. And yet, by declaring war, these nations have made grave mistakes. These nations now open up their colonies to invasions. And I will not hesitate to capitalize on those mistakes. Hey guys, Stealth here and welcome back to Ultimate Admiral Dreadnoughts, episode 25. In case you haven't been paying attention to the series thus far. I have taken over China, of course. I've taken over Korea. I've taken over Japan. I've taken over some swaths of Russia. I am also working my way gradually, but definitely, into the, let's say, the Middle East-esque, Uzbekistan. It's entirely possible we're going to go to Afghanistan at some point. And I wouldn't be surprised that if the Russians start stirring the pot again, we'll invade them and take over Turkmenistan. Far more interestingly, we actually have territory in the United States. We've taken over Maine, and then a land invasion got launched and took over eastern USA. Now, I'm not going to be doing as much income from this province, simply because my government structure doesn't really allow it. I have also taken over a large portion of the Caribbean, and there is potentially more to be had. For the simple reason that I'm at war with the French, and the French still have territory here. Now, the French, as far as I can tell, are really the only ones that still have territory here, leading me to a very interesting opportunity. If I take out the French here, I don't have to station any ships, because it is simply going to be impossible for the French to project any power. If they cannot project any power, my merchantmen are safe. Now, I did send the fleet to Europe, paying a little visit to Santa Cruz. And over here we have one battlecruiser leading 21 heavy cruisers, and we have a battlecruiser and two heavy cruisers. This is sort of a scout force, if you will. As for these areas here, uh, the Virgin Islands are already mine. The French Antilles aren't yet. But we can definitely change that. They have two ports, Fort de France and Point à Pitre. These two ports need to get taken out and then we can immediately invade the French Antilles. Do they have anything else? Why yes, they have Trinidad, courtesy of what I think used to be Spanish territory, but the French took it over. And then of course we have Suriname and we have French Guiana. Uh, I think this used to be Dutch, or at least uh, in the world history it was. But in the game, it too has been taken over by the French. Not very serious defense here, like almost 3,500 points in tonnage. So the defense here is going to be pretty weak. And the same can be said here. Like this is a... Well, actually the army force doesn't look impressive. But the port does. And the French have stationed a light cruiser there. Now, where is my fleet? Well, not far. We have the state belts. We have the Dimos Tijalas, uh, Nanning, Krektuna... A whole lot of cruisers and a couple, or actually one destroyer as an escort. We're going to do some island hopping over here, so we're going to say hello to the French. Let's introduce ourselves right now and say that I want to take over the French Antilles, sorry, French Guiana, for 55,000 tons. Uh, the fleet that I'm sending in is 270,000 tons, so we should be able to take this fairly swiftly. As for the other world powers who I'm currently clashing with, the Spanish and the Italians. I'm not too interested in going to town on the Italians at the moment. I mean, taking over something like Sardinia is nice. The problem is defending the place. Not so much the island, but the Mediterranean. If you fail at that, well, everybody and their mother is going to hunt down your merchantmen as they move around in the western Mediterranean. If you don't have any provinces there, you're safe. The same can kind of be said about the, the Bay of Biscay, so I might not even want to take out the Spanish. Um, I have taken over the islands here, the Santa Cruz Islands. I can take over Morocco and the Western Sahara. They're not that impressive defense-wise. Well, this one is. Morocco is a bit heavier. It does come with its own oil production, and the Sahara does not. So let's pay the French a visit, uh, if and when I can, in the next turn with a naval invasion. 
The real question is, what is the uh, Spanish response going to be? Uh, one light cruiser. It's going to the Caribbean, which is probably where it will meet my massive war fleet. So that shouldn't be a problem. As for the rest, um, the French... I'm not really sure where their ships are at. They have a pretty substantial navy. they got 24 battleships. I just don't know if those are from 1890, like leftover battleships, or if they're ships that have been just recently designed in 1935. The difference is going to be massive depending on what level of tech that these guys bring. So we're going to have to deal with these French battleships here, most likely, if they come to the defense of the French Antilles, that is. There is, yeah, here's the whole French fleet. you got eight battleships there and 15 there. Well, that's going to make for a very, very interesting next couple of months in the Mediterranean. As for my shipbuilding, I'm doing 443,000 tons for 462, because I am still trying to produce uh, made-in-China ships for the rest of the world. Right now, we have one ship coming off the line relatively soon. That's the Beijing. So Chengdu-class battlecruiser for the Indian Empire. Uh, they also want a showboat. The Philippines want a new battlecruiser. Um, how exactly something like the Philippines is going to be able to afford this thing in maintenance per month? Because it's 10 million a month. So you're paying 120 million a year for the pleasure of having that ship. Um, I don't know exactly how they're going to afford that. Because on a 2.7 billion economy... Your naval budget won't be that significant, but whatever. It's the AI. We'll just have to see how that goes. At any rate, it means that I cannot currently build any of those new fancy ships that I've designed in the previous episode. The Cursed Fish, um, I cannot build that because I simply don't have the capacity. But somebody said, why don't you go build destroyers for export purposes? You can make them really expensive and you can build them really quickly. I thought that's a great idea, so let's go and do that. Make a destroyer surely designed for export. Now, what's the difference between a destroyer made for export and a destroyer made for, let's say, own service? The difference lies in the price of the ship. A destroyer, um, let's say an advanced... Oh, this the hybrid destroyer. Nice. A hybrid destroyer can normally get built in seven months, whereas, for example, a super battleship, yeah, that's going to take 30, 36 months. But um, a hybrid destroyer can be built far faster. And you can still make them expensive. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to give it, well, I don't know, 45 knots seems fair. Um, you cannot do that with standard turbines. You might be able to do it with a diesel. You're already looking at a ship worth 3 billion. You go turbo electric, it's 1.7. So maybe 45 knots is a bit high. 600 million with turbo electric. Diesels, 1 billion. Now, the rest of the ship, um, basically make it as expensive as you can without blossoming the build time too much. So, um, yes, it's going to be a high-tech ship, but if I'm looking strictly at the, let's say, the amount of firepower that this ship is likely to have, I personally wouldn't use it. Simply because it's way, way, way too expensive for what I need it to do. I, I can have... Yeah, guns won't add that much. Um... Let's give it one gun there, one there, one there. Let's give it a torpedo launcher here and here. Another gun there. Okay, she's a bit a bit overpriced. That's fine. The range actually is not important to me, but it might be to the AI. We can increase the displacement. That means that this thing is going to clash with the torpedo launcher. Look at the deck space on this boat. That is quite roomy indeed. I think triple hull bottom might be a bit much. Let's see if I can save something else. Oh, radar is a nice way to make it expensive without making it heavy. All right, you're going to get a sonar array. You're going to get auto loaders. Um, is there a price difference between the type of torpedo? Torpedo launcher cost 25%, 50%. Yes, I'll take the 50. And then I'll take 24. 4 inch, because it's another 45% bonus in cost, that is. Um, better turret rotation speed. Let's see, what else? Uh, maybe not give him Dunite. Like, I would personally never buy a $2 billion destroyer. I don't mind playing around with them in a campaign or in a, a one-off battle. 
But in a campaign, it is bizarre. I just would not do that. Unfortunately, they are still too heavy. I can drop the bulkheads, I guess. It's so heavy about this ship. Oh crap, I still need a funnel. Okay, we're going to sacrifice a torpedo launcher for that. Engine efficiency does not need to be very good. Um, yeah, we're still still way over 33 knots. Yeah. Now, I want to try and get it to like... About a billion. There we go. Um, I need to save 1,000 tons somewhere. Who needs bulkheads anywhere? Where we're going, we don't need bulkheads. If I don't give it an auxiliary engine, that saves some weight. Steam steering is fine. Uh, who needs barbettes? Barbettes are overrated. Krupp armor changes the price a bit. Does not change the displacement. Reinforced bulkheads can go. <laughs> Basically, anything that makes this thing worth having can go. Um, I just hope that I never actually have to use these things for myself. Because that would be a bit of a challenge. We're 300 tons over and I really don't know where I can still save some weight. Can we do 36.5? 36. Yeah. Drops a bit much. 36, uh, I don't know, 3? Where's the magic border here? There. Okay, 816 million dollars for a DD. The DD that I personally use sometimes is the pink one, um, costing you 36 million. So this thing has a pretty nice markup to it, and I only need eight months to build it. So probably build time wise, this thing, um, the uh, don't buy this, is definitely going to be uh, very much for export. Personally, firepower wise, it's awful. It is poorly defended. The only selling point is that it is pretty quick, although not even terribly so. I've seen the French DD in the previous episode that was, I don't know, about 40 knots. That is a lot more impressive. Uh, this thing, yeah, I personally would never buy this. One month later and we're about to have our first look at the French battle cruiser, The Victoire, which is a bit presumptuous because it hasn't exactly been victorious yet. This thing strikes me as a bit old and crazy expensive because they made it really quick. 36.7 knots and the price tag for this thing is 2.8 billion dollars. It's really good news for me, not so good news for the French. Because the way the victory points work, if you sink something that is really expensive, like say 2.8 billion, you're going to get a heck of a payout in victory points, which is definitely going to come in handy when I, well, potentially eventually make peace with the French. Our stars for today are destroyer Jingsheng, battlecruisers Ora, Niroklax, and Zhao Hui. This is one of the older uh, battlecruiser classes with all the galley glass guns. The Ora, as well as the Nidoct, is um, armed with 14 inch guns. These are the Mark III. Sure, I got the Mark IV yet, yeah, but I think I do. I got the 8.9s, which are Mark IV. And the other battlecruiser is the same. Now, that French thing only had 6 11s. So... Nah, okay. It's it's an okay design. It feels relatively normal. Compared to the, let's say, somewhat more exotic things that the AI has thrown together. We have two A turret, or A turret, B turret, and X turret. I'm not sure exactly why it decided to put that up on a barbette. Because there's nothing behind it. But then again, not everything in this game makes perfect sense. As for the range, uh, they got a torpedo out to 8.4, they got main guns out to 31 clicks on an 11 inch gun? You wanna run me by that? Like how do you get that range? That is awfully impressive. Somewhat scary too. Because it means that these things are probably long barrels. Long barrels equals fairly accurate guns. Um, it also means... Yeah, they do look like long barrels. It also means that a ship is relatively going to have a high muzzle velocity. Which then translates into a higher, tensin, a higher tendency to hit the, hit the belt armor, not the deck. That is good for me. 
because I don't really have the armor to deal with any kind of serious deck pairs. Like I got five inch on the main, but one and a half on the fore and aft. Detach these uh, BCs because they're way faster. Aura, Nyrox, let's go. We are here to just uh, defend this transport convoy. So I need to make sure that these battle cruiser, well, this battle cruiser and their allies have something else to shoot at. This thing, armed with a couple of torpedo launchers, armed with a couple of 9-inch guns. Interesting setup over there with a single 5.4 or 6.2. No, I'm thinking the 6.2s are on the sides. So this has to be a 5.4-inch gun. And then it has 22 1.8s. That's quite a lot. Battle cruisers, so not capable of detecting torpedoes. Uh, this thing is 16 clicks out. I can hit you at 9. We're going to have to close in. And that's not very helpful. See, that's the 11-inch gun. Very accurate gun. And I wouldn't be surprised if my DD is not quite going to be able to get to launching position. Fortunately, the French have kind of played themselves. Because a battle cruiser that's very fast is a battle cruiser that tends to outrun its escorts. And when it does that, well, it won't hear any kind of torpedo coming in. That is very useful. Now, I know that I'm closing into probably suicide range here. We got 8.4 on their torps. Yeah, we're definitely going to be within that, uh, that secondary range of theirs. Um, these are 21-inch fish. I turned over this way, so I'm kind of getting a somewhat broadside profile for the battle cruiser. Now we're gonna have to try and run away. All right, you are gonna go broadside. That's a lot of damage. That'll not survive that. You guys engaging the battle cruiser. Battle cruiser now turning. That'd be a bit annoying. We got three torps going there, one there. Hmm. Yeah, there goes the DD. Kind of as expected. And the battle cruiser now turns. That is unfortunate. Now, not having any kind of a torpedo detection works both ways. It works against me just as much as it works against them. Because this battle cruiser has torpedo launchers. And it is probably fairly eager to introduce me to their capabilities. But seeing as I'm not seeing them on the deck, I am only going to conclude that they're underwater torpedo launchers, so they're going to be port starboard, bow stern. Something to that effect. Which means, at the moment, I'm relatively safe. My ship, the Oro, already broadside, has been able to launch a torp. And, uh, well, if that battle cruiser is indeed going at flank speed, it'll not really be able... Oh, we destroyed their launchers. It'll not be able to really launch a torpedo, but... I mean, destroying a torpedo launcher is a far safer way to go about it. So, tell me all about your ship. Many bulkheads, spacious quarters. You got 36 knots. You have, um, hmm, the cluster armor. And what makes you so expensive? Well, you got Crypt 4 armor scheme. You got Anti-Torp 4. Bloody hell. Unfortunately, your ship is not resilient to shells. Don't mind the torpedoes. Stereoscopic 5, they got Generation 1 radar. They're definitely getting tech stuff. Um, Engine-wise, it's diesels. Yeah. You want to make a fast diesel? That's, uh, that's going to cost you a pretty penny. <clears throat> and these guys are about to find out. Or rather, they have. Oh, some decent flooding over here. There goes the Victoire. Structural damage. So now we have to deal with the others. This is their light cruiser. Sporting launchers on the stern. Their heavy cruiser with sporting launchers on the bows. And their DD. Oh, they're so far behind. I'm not going to consider those a threat just yet. For just safe measure, I'm going to have the Aura and the Nidark slightly angle away from these ships. So that I'm presenting a smaller profile. And the Zhao Hui is going to be able... Ideally, with the main guns to engage these light cruisers. Well, let's say this one. Secondary is on that. This way I should be able to get most out of the ship. So the 13-inch guns. 
on the bow. Midships and stern are going to engage the second light cruiser and the secondary guns, being 8s and 3.9s, engage the other one. I do have to be careful not to ram into the sinking Victoire. Good damage there. One's already gone. Oh, that's a lot better. Who's doing all that? Is that the Aura? No, it's the Night Oct. Nice work, dude. Oh, oh, another six. Yeah, you're you're pretty much toast. You're sunk. And here I was kind of hoping that the French were actually going to be putting up a fight. Alas. Not as of yet. But perhaps those battleships are something else. I cannot rule them out entirely yet. You just launched a torpedo at the Zhao Hui. Okay, uh, all back emergency. If you got torpedoes coming in, be where the torpedoes aren't. Wow. Actually, 3,000 points of damage from the 8-inch guns. They did more than the mains. For now. This thing kind of refuses to slow down, but at least by doing this, I am making my turn faster. So now I can increase speed again, and we're going to continue on the turn. Gentlemen, do we have more torpedoes coming in? Because the Dupetit still has torps, and these are... They're only 18-inch. I guess it's not about the size, it's knowing how to use them, but... An 18-inch torpedo is something that I'm not particularly concerned about. Oh. That helps. You got no armor. No, you got some armor. Some armor. Is my HE really that good? Yes, it is that good. Yeah, you're gone. <laughs> And then the game starts telling me, hey, your tech is behind. These guys are very advanced. Yeah, they're very quickly advancing their way to the bottom of the wo uh, bottom of the ocean. That's how advanced they are. They're a bit advanced in the sense that they're way ahead of me and already sinking. Uh, Fury, oh, that is unwelcome. All back emergency. Unfortunately, this thing still has turbines. Oh boy, furieux. Well, yes. Oh, it's a dud. <laughs> that could have been worse. That could have been a live torpedo. And these things do have anti-torp too. So that, that take a hit and they'll live. But it's not something I really want to put to the test. Because it is expensive, repairing a battle cruiser. Can you not? Damn it. Uh, you're going to continue on the turn. You're going to uh, hit the throttle. Uh, yeah, we're fine. <laughs> Another dud. Oh, boy. I'll take that. There we go. 43,000 victory points for killing what? Two lights, two destroyers, two heavies, and one battlecruiser. But the battlecruiser was so crazy expensive that uh, that thing probably contributed by four far by far the majority of the points yeah good good victory against the french and now the french went sacre bleu <laughs> please give me a peace treaty um no i'm a little busy taking over your territory so i cannot exactly go to peace just yet we do have some convoys here what do we get ah the kahar it's a familiar name Going up against the battle cru no, the heavy cruiser Foch, armed with three 10.6s. Interesting. And we have the destroyer Mameluk. Thankfully, it's not one of those speedboats. It only, well, only does 34 knots, almost 35. Let's take these guys out, and they cannot be threatening my convoy. Here's the Kahar, armed with her 9 inch guns, torpedo launchers as a secondary option. And a couple of 5-inch guns. They will all come in useful. All of these weapon systems. The enemy French ship. Armed with 10.1s. These are short barrels. And they have... Wads. Torpedo launchers there. Amidships. But that's a very... Very shit firing angle, really. You got a small secondary gun in front of it. I would never have placed that there. 
because it means that I can still throw out a torpedo pretty much towards, let's say, 11 o'clock and 1 o'clock. But with a, well, with a secondary turret there, that's really not going to add anything. What is that? A 1-inch one, one gun? 2-inch gun, likely. You just won't really get much of a result. Now, what sort of range you guys get? 18 and a half. It's not that good. Not good. You got a mark 4. Okay. Here's their destroyer. The Mameluk. Let's slow the ship down a bit. Build some accuracy. I have not really checked out their armor scheme yet. So let's stick to HE for now. That should be sufficient. Just wound them a little bit. And seeing as again I have no hydro, no sonar, I'm going to keep the ship maneuvering to make sure that I present myself as a difficult target. Let's point the stern towards the target somewhat. So drop the torps. Some secondaries on that. They might get some some warning from the DD. I mean, they ought to. They ought to. But this thing is running at pretty decent speeds. So I think it'll run right into the bow. Or into the lead torpedo here. And... Bonk. Big bonk. Eight and a half thousand points. Let's put uh, the the blah, blah, the secondaries on here, so the primary is there, secondary is there. Execute. Once again, assume that there's a torpedo on the way. Turn the ship around. Be unpredictable. The destroyer, thankfully, is already flooded, so it's going to be a bit more difficult for them to try and catch up. And it should be pretty much rendered inefficient by the five inches. Yeah, look at that. Having done 5,000 points of damage. There goes the Mameluk. No torpedoes were launched. Excellent. Next up, Forsh. The armor scheme you got then. Mm, not great. Two and a half inch armor belt. We're fighting the ship at about six clicks. So I can just, just about pen their main armor. But I think AP is going to sail right through. And if you don't have a whole lot of bulkheads, you got many, but you got cramped quarters. Yeah, we're flooding this thing all over the place. Interesting seeing that there's almost a trend where the AI has ships that are just not that heavily armored. Oh, that hurt. Come on, Fosh. Holy shit. <laughs> Armor's been badly, badly damaged, and it simply cannot hold up to the continuous rain of 9-inch shells anymore. There goes the Farsh. There's no threatening my convoys, you French... French people. Derpy Me actually selected French Guiana, as opposed to the French Antilles for the naval invasion. So we're gonna have to take the whole fleet and move over. Thankfully, the army actually comes up with a great initiative. Let's walk 750,000 men into Suriname and take over the place, which is defended by 15,000 French. Yeah, we should have this. What is my army logistics like? <laughs> 29%. Um, this basically means that my army is not nearly as efficient as it should be. And that has to do, to some extent, with how many ships I have, uh, how many transports I have. And uh, as it says, if the transport capacity and Navy's power are reduced, then the army will become dysfunctional. Well, I don't think the army needs me to become dysfunctional, but that's a different discussion. They will not be effective in land combat, as opposed to normally. Um, this kind of makes it a bit unfortunate. And as I'm still building ships and repairing some others, I don't exactly have the capacity to build more. Well, I mean, I can build more. It's just going to take lots and lots and lots of delays. That's a problem. If you ever find yourself in a situation like I am, make sure you have a couple of ships stationed in some of your new ports, such as the, uh, the Guangxi over here. Um, we have a heavy cruiser over there, that's the Kahar. 
These ships are not part of the actual battle fleet, but they are instrumental in defending all the transports that I have sailing around here, which of course aren't rendered. If you don't have that, you will start to lose transports rather quickly. And sure enough, you can rebuild them if you so desire, but it is not going to go quickly. So in my case, just having a couple of cruisers here and there, making sure that I cover my transport routes really, really helps out. It looks like it's going to be a party in the Caribbean pretty soon. We have the Spanish coming in. We have uh, the Italians coming in. Yeah, there's a lot. <laughs> Holy shit, there's a lot of Italians on their way. Um, and that's on top of the French fleet, right? Where? Where do all the Frenchies go? Did they? Yeah, there they are. Oh boy. Well, we're definitely up for a big battle. The real question is what superpower, or well, <laughs> relative power, am I going to be facing first? Let's have a look. For the final part of this video, we're going to have a look at the stick belt class again. Scheffler Gaming, armed with 16 inch guns, escorted by one destroyer, the E46. Um, OG E46 class, it has one gun. And six torpedo launchers. It is just designed as a bit of a torpedo distraction. Outside of that, it is not going to be that useful. Well, maybe a smoke screen. So that means that Scheffler Gaming, with 16-inch guns and 8-inch guns and 5-inch guns, is going to have to fend off a battlecruiser. This is the same... Well, no, it's not the same type of battlecruiser. This thing is armed with 12 17-inch guns. Whoops. I thought, oh, this is going to be easy. Nope, this battlecruiser has bigger guns than mine. Hmm. And they're tier 3 as well. They're compensating for something with those funnels. I would not... Did you leave home without your main superstructure today? Where's your main tower? Are you commanding the ship from a funnel? Like... How are you running this ship? This is their secondary tower. They're... <laughs> yeah, the ship is genuinely running without a primary tower. This is one of those things that make me wonder... Why... Are we still paying 30 bucks for dreadnoughts? Why are things like this... Not ironed out. Now, potentially, this has to do with Brother Monroe's mod that I'm using. The Dreadnought Improvement Project. Potentially, I'm not sure. It's been a long, long, long time since... Stop killing my transports. It's been a long, long time since I've actually seen something like this. But apparently, it is still a thing. And I don't like it. Now, unfortunately, the Sheffler Gaming here only has a regular trained crew. So her accuracy is potentially going to suffer somewhat. What I can do to allow her to get a little closer, if I so desire, but I don't really want to, is to set up a smoke screen from the E46. Hold on, what you got there? It's your DD. Oh, you're <laughs> you're not very heavily armored either, or sorry, armed either. Five inches just coming into range of the DD. I'm going to put the fives and the eights to work on that. While the main guns continue to try and punch a hole in this battle cruiser. So far, well, we penned them. But a bit much. And that was with high explosive. That is a bit weird. So far, I found that the French ships are ridiculously poorly armored. I didn't actually record it, but I came across a couple of light cruisers... That had 0 0.7 inches of armor. That was not their main belt. Their main belt was two and a half. Like, it was. It, it might have resisted a machine gun, but not much more than that. This battle cruiser scares me. I really don't like it. And this DD getting so close to a battleship that is just not designed to ever turn that's pretty bad as well finally we're building some accuracy ow stick to HE smoke him up 
Uh, you are far faster than your friend. Oh. Ow. Shells weren't even meant for me, were they? There's more DDs coming in. Oh, this DD is toast. In service of others. It did launch the torpedoes. Not a moment too soon, because now it doesn't have any launchers left. Seriously? There we go. That thing was hanging on by... Oh, maybe less than a thread. Target those other DDs. There goes the E46. Um, these ships should spot the torp right about now. This is a heavy cruiser, though. Yeah, that actually has a pretty decent chance of hitting. Bonk. Ah, it's a dud. Ah. Uh, okay, fine. At least we were able to pen their battle cruiser a bit. Let's go for AP shells. Because at this angle, I think we can make some more flooding happen. Nope. Overpens. If I keep overpending this thing with AP and HE, it has almost no armor. So this thing is another paper project. What the fuck? I said it had almost no armor. I didn't say it had no armor. So you... You left home without a main tower and without armor? Are you some sort of converted barge with three funnels and a couple of 17-inch guns? Is this like a... Like a Toyota Hilux with a machine gun, except the naval version of it? What am I looking at here, and why... Why did this pass the shipbuilder, I wonder? H-E. H-E! I think these heavy cruisers and their torpedoes might actually be more dangerous than their main ship. Their capital... Oh. I was wondering what the heavy cruiser was doing. Well... It's going after the protectees. Oh, the Esperance just took a massive hit. 19,000 and 17,000 and the whole ship's on fire. And has lost 22% of her crew. These heavy cruisers... <laughs> At least this has some armor. Okay. Just finish off the Esperance, will you? This thing has torpedo launchers on port and starboard side. So it is entirely likely that I'll come under attack next. Increase speed to flank. There it is! Start turning away from those torps if you can. This thing is down to 1% structural integrity and about to flood. And we're gonna have more torpedoes coming in from Tonon. Steady as she goes. There goes their battlecruiser. I think I can see a torp there and there. So if I am able to stay at this angle, should be okay. Oh, fuck you. There's more? Damn it. Oh, boy. And this is the problem with formations or the lack thereof. This ship was never designed to go out alone. And yet, that's exactly what happened. This ship is supposed to have escorts. And those escorts keep it safe. They spot torpedoes. They're able to keep the rest of the ships off of them. The Scheffler Gaming is part of a substantial task force. Yet... Ah, oh, fuck. Yet, the rest of the ships seem to be doing something else. And I don't know what. Well, at least she's still giving out quite a bit of damage. And I have not blown quite literally through all of my... Oh, no. Through all of my ammunition with that flash fire. Oh. Yeah, we're... No, we're not clear. That hit me three times. Okay, Tonon's gonna potentially finish me off here. There goes the Congreve. <sighs> Don't do it, dude. Oh, you're loading. Okay, in that case, I'm going to finish you off. Turn the main turrets. Turret rotation speed. One degree per second. We'll never catch up to that thing. I've put all the secondaries on armor piercing now. Because at this range, 400 meters out, we can definitely pen that. 
We can pen plen- Dud. We can pen plenty. Oh, the main guns are catching up. Slowly but surely. Range, about a click. One click out, I can pen nine inches of armor. You don't have that. We're loading HE. Oh! No, dude. Completely missed the ship. What the? Oh, they're torpedoing the transports again. Come on. Ow! 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 The thing is still here. <laughs> the fact that it's still maneuvering and hasn't been completely destroyed after taking 11 torpedo hits and some hits from uh, other... Ooh, there you go. Uh, from other various large calibers, like 17-inch guns, I'd say is a testament to Chinese shipbuilding. The problem is, I'm not sure if I can stop this flooding, because there is a lot of it. Put the secondaries against the uh, light cruiser. Yeah. Here's the paper light cruiser. 0.7 inches. At this range, we might even... Yell yeah, we're going to go HE. Or I'll overpen it. Oh, don't flood, don't flood, don't flood. It'll go into dry dock for the next 12 months. But I can... Ah! Uh, you're going to torpedo yourself? I can get behind that. It's going to be in a dry dock for the next 12 months, but I can live with that. There she goes. I need to sink two cruisers. Forban seems to be very much intent on just ramming me. For some unclear reason. Now, I do have a big issue here. My ship is so badly listing that I don't think I can get a single gun to still function. The only guns that you can normally get to function this way are the bow and stern ones. I'm going to try and turn away. Look at the Galilei. Almost flooded. The problem, she still has torpedoes. Forban does not. Forban has... Yeah. It has even less armor? Uh. Come on. Yes. Flooding. Casemates. Any. Seriously? <laughs> I refuse to get picked apart by a couple of light cruisers armed with 7-inch guns that have no armor. But I'm afraid that's exactly what we'll see happen here. Well, we can get some of the 8-inch guns to fire. Yes. Oh, this thing is full health. Oh, not for long. Come on. <laughs> there goes 40% of your buoyancy. My main guns have decided just not to even bother anymore. This thing is not particularly agile. Structural integrity, 10%. I think they're going to be hard-pressed to try and push through that structural integrity, so... Flooding is my... Probably my biggest concern right now. Look at that. All blocked, 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 blocked. This thing is heavily protected. Maybe they can pen my four belts? No, can't do that. You? Nope. They can't pen anything. Okay. What I'm hoping for now is that one of these guys actually pushes to in front of me, and the Galilei just might. So that I can get one or two shots in on it and sink it. Uh, I'm not sure what the Forban is doing. But it looks like it's going to be fairly close to a ram. Come on, casemates. Casemates. Case mates. Oh, we're getting some damage in the Forban. Starboard side case mates. This oh, this is the starboard case mate. And <laughs> we're hitting Forban when I'm trying to hit Galilei. Whatever. Continue. 
Starboard turn, insofar as we still have anything that resembles a rudder. Oh, the main gun's turning. Come on. 9% structural integrity. Forban is still flooding? How? Look at the, the blisters on that ship. Yep, seventeen percent. They still have flooding, but now they're coming back. Twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, thirty. I think ending the battle is actually a good idea. Just bring this battleship home, shall we? I got my victory points by killing their battle cruiser and heavies. Let's try and get the Scheffler Gaming out somehow. Somehow. Okay. The ship is safe. Ish. How long is it going to take to fix her up? Well. 12 months. <laughs> I called it. 12 months. It's what it's going to take to get this ship back into service. Yeah. So be it. Uh, at least I didn't lose one. Because these things are very expensive to build at 2 billion. So my status against the French right now. Um, I've gained 87,000 victory points this episode. And they have only scored 1,800. I am invading here, which is going to go through. I'm invading in Spain, which has a pretty decent chance to go through. And if I just do... Well, if I get lucky with one or two port attacks, I should be able to neutralize that in Morocco. And completely take over Morocco. As for this last convoy one, I'm going to do this one off screen. Because we've already seen the Zhao Hui before. Um, it's not that much of a different type of battle. So join me next time to see how the war against all these different powers is going. And, uh, well, plenty more terrain to conquer before we control the rest of the world. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you soon for more videos.